Why are we still injecting it into the bodies of ourselves and our pets? This is neurotoxic and you don't want it injected into your animal. Hi, I'm Dr. Judy Morgan, your pet's advocate. For many years, I have been advocating for you to get thimerosal-free rabies vaccines for your pets, or tea-free is how it's labeled. And I know that Marielle makes a tea-free rabies vaccine. Many veterinarians are not aware that there is a thimerosal-free rabies vaccine available, and a lot of you have gone to your veterinarian and requested that, and that's the first they've ever heard of it. A lot of veterinarians say, no, we're not gonna do that. This is the one we use and we're not willing to get that one for you. Or if you want that one, we'll buy a tray. It's 25 doses. You have to pay for all 25 doses. Really, they should be looking at the research and really digesting the knowledge that is out there. What I'm going to discuss today is thimerosal, but this is actually from a human study. This was posted by James Lyons Weiler in his Substack, Popular Rationalism, on June 26, 25, and it's titled, An Historic Day for Children's Health. The ACIP vote against thimerosal is a long overdue triumph of knowledge over narrative. Today, June 26, 2025, marks a watershed in the history of public health. In a decisive five to one vote, the U.S. Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, so this is a, a new people that have been brought in, formally recommended against the continued use of thimerosal containing influenza vaccines for children and pregnant women. While the headlines frame the moment as a capitulation to anti-vaccine sediment or the result of political meddling. Let us be clear, this was a reckoning and it should be viewed by the vaccine industry and medicine that the era of narrative-based policy is over. This is a victory for empirically grounded medicine for a long overdue course correction. And I wish we could get this in the veterinary industry as well. The compound at the center of this landmark vote is thimerosal, an organomercurial preservative used in multi-dose vaccine vials and single dose in the pet industry. For years, federal agencies downplayed concerns about thimerosal, pointing to ethyl mercuries. Ethyl mercury, does that sound like something we should be injecting into our body? But they said it has a shorter blood half-life relative to methyl mercury. Again, why are we putting that in our bodies? But blood clearance is not brain clearance, and no amount of rhetorical hand-waving could erase the data from a pivotal study from 2005, Burbacher et al. is a primate study, so that's monkeys. Researchers compared the disposition of methyl and ethyl mercury in infant macaque monkeys. What they found shook the foundation of vaccine toxicology. Ethyl mercury from thimerosal cleared the blood quickly, but left behind nearly twice the amount of inorganic mercury in the brain compared to methylmercury. These deposits accumulated and persisted. So if your veterinarian is saying your pet needs a rabies vaccine every year or every two years or every three years, this mercury is accumulating in the brain and persisting. The implications were clear. Ethylmercury behaves differently than previously assumed. It demethylates rapidly and lodges in the brain as inorganic mercury, which is neurotoxic and persistent. You know with those dogs that get MMM? It's autoimmune disease that attacks the nerves of the muscles of the head. And so those muscles shrink. It's painful. They can't open their mouth. They can't chew. They lose all their chewing muscles. And it has been definitely related to rabies vaccines. We see it a lot in golden retrievers, Labradors, Cavaliers. I saw a ton of it in practice. We usually see it a few months after the vaccine is given. We give the vaccine on the back end of the dog and eventually it makes its way up there and causes this autoimmune problem. It's neurotoxic and persistent. The result, a toxicological time bomb silently delivered to the developing nervous system, never measured by the superficial pharmacokinetics on which policy had relied. The fallacy of safety by science. For two decades, critics of thimerosal were vilified. Hello. Reputations were sacrificed, motives impugned, and their science dismissed by press release rather than rebutted by data. Safety releases were based on flawed population studies with poor exposure quantification and short follow-up. Worse, comparative pharmacokinetics in non-human primates were ignored entirely. This is on the human side. Good luck for us on the pet side.
Today, the false consensus collapsed. Yay. Faced with the mounting evidence and a growing demand for ethical transparency, the ACIP majority chose prudence. They voted to end the recommendation for thimerosal containing flu shots. This decision affects only 4% of influenza vaccines in the U.S., but it's seismic. Seven and a half million exposures per year will be prevented. Seven and a half million children and pregnant women who are protected by not having this in their vaccines. That's not chump change, folks. Think of how many dogs and cats get rabies vaccines with thimerosal in them every single year. Millions, millions, millions. It means that a biologically active neurotoxin, neurotoxin, shown to persist in the brain, will no longer be endorsed for injection into American children and unwitting adults under the guise of necessity. And what was the response of the lone dissenter, the one who voted against this? Data, a counterstudy, a call for replication? No, the response was to call the other committee members childish. This is what we have termed the tantrum fallacy, a rhetorical gesture in which emotion replaces argument and name calling substitutes for rebuttal. When an expert resorts, to tone policing rather than evidence they have nothing left. This was not an act of authority, it was a concession. This is big. Oh, here we go. A debt to the children who suffered. Make no mistake, this vote did not occur in a vacuum. It is the delayed result of decades of science. Advocacy to use that science in policy, litigation, health loss, and empirical stubbornness. It was paid for by the health of children whose developmental trajectories were irreversibly altered. It was delayed by pharmaceutical obfuscation and careerist cowardice. And it only happened because people refused to accept science as safety. This vote does not undo the damage, but it does stop the damage, and that makes it historic. What comes next? There's much left to do. Mercury is still in the global vaccine supply. Oh, you bet it is. And it's used on our pets all the time. Children across the developing world remain exposed to multi-dose vials preserved with thimerosal. Public health agencies must now follow the science they've long ignored and expand this ban worldwide. We've been saying this in the pet industry for so long. We know that our pets are thought of as much less than our children. I get it. I love my children, I love my grandchild, but I also do love my animals and they are part of my family. And I don't think that they should be injected with something that we know is neurotoxic and accumulates in the brain and causes problems. How many years have we heard that the mercury used in the fillings in our mouth is causing toxicity problems for all of us? I grew up in that age. Let me tell you how many of my teeth have mercury fillings in them. They don't use that anymore. Why? Oh, because we know it's toxic. Why are we still injecting it into the bodies of ourselves and our pets? And I think it's time for it to stop. I think that if your veterinarian is still using a vaccine that has thimerosal in it, they're not up to date on the research, you should take it to them and let them know that this is neurotoxic and you don't want it injected into your animal. When I was in practice, my clients trusted that I would find the safest, best, natural products for their pets and my patients. That's how I started Naturally Healthy Pets. I had a lot of clients who had to travel a long distance to get to my clinic, and when they needed refills, we needed a way to easily be able to have them order and get them shipped very quickly. So I started Naturally Healthy Pets in my garage. My husband, Hugh, would do fulfillment for me. All of the products that have been available on Naturally Healthy Pets over the years have been hand-selected by me to be the most natural, human-grade, best products for your pets that are actually going to help them with their health and longevity. If you like the content on my channel, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. The more subscribers we get, the more people we will reach because the platform will push it out to more people. So hit like and subscribe.